Hey guys, welcome to the uh, next unit that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at uh, reasoning with angles and triangles in round lesson number one. So the first thing we're doing is looking at investigating or we're investigating angle relationships. And so this first part is going to be a review, um, but we're going to be using inductive and deductive deductive reasoning in this in this uh, unit to determine relationships between angles and parallel lines in this first lesson. So first of all, let's look at types of angles. So the first one I got here is an acute angle. For all of these, with this first in investigation, all we need to do is um, use an appropriate arc to represent the angle x degrees in each case. And for the figure which represents a right angle, use the symbol for this right angle. So first of all, I have an acute angle. If I'm looking for x degrees here between 0 and 90 degrees, that would be this arc. This is a 90 degree right angle. That's where we're going to be using this one. For an obtuse angle, we have x is greater than 90 but less than 180 degrees. That would be right here. For a straight angle, that's 180 degrees. That would be a measurement like this. For a reflex angle, uh, my angle x is greater than 180 but less than 360 degrees, right here. And for a complete rotation, we would have to show that I'm going all the way around and coming back to where I started. So next, let's look at angles on one side of a straight line. So in each case, we want to use a protractor to measure the indicated angles, and we want to complete this work. So first of all, when I have x degrees, I want to, I want to know what this measurement of x is here. So I take my protractor, I set my origin along the my first vertex here, and I get a, a measurement of 140 degrees for angle x. 140 degrees for angle x. I could measure here y, but I know that if I have a straight line, they have to add up to 180 degrees. One of them is 140 degrees. I can go 180 minus 140 to give me 40 degrees. And I also can measure 40 degrees. So x plus y would add up to equal 180 degrees. And we would com we'd complete the same exercise for these next two figures. So I'll, I'll do B and then you guys can do C. So A, I just measured it, was 120 degrees. B, if we measure it, we're gonna get 60 degrees. And when you add those together, again, we get 180 degrees. So using inductive reasoning, angles on one side of a straight line add up to, according to our examples, 180 degrees based on that evidence. So two angles which add up to 180 degrees, those are called supplementary angles. Each is the supplement of the other. <coughs> and so in part A above, X and Y are supplementary angles. X is the supplement of Y and vice versa. All right, so next we're going to be looking at, uh, let's look at example number one. So with class example number one, we want to calculate the angles marked with letters. So I want to find out, and I'm just going to do this first one, and then I'll let you guys figure out the other ones. But if I'm looking for angle A, I know that it's a supplementary angle. So I know that 155 degrees plus angle A have to add up to be 180 degrees. Another way we can write this is A degrees is equal to 180 degrees minus 155 degrees. And that would tell me that 180, that, that would mean angle A is equal to 25 degrees. And I would just do the same thing for the next two problems. So straight lines, opposite angles at a vertex and vertically opposite angles. So if I have a straight line which cross to make an X shape, so, so two straight lines and they cross each other at the vertex to make a, the shape of an X, the point where the two lines cross, that is called the vertex. So right here is my vertex. So vertex right there. Um, in the diagram, P and Q are opposite angles at the vertex, so P and Q are opposite angles, and R and S are also opposite angles. 
So in class example 1c shown to the right is an example of a rule involving the opposite angles of an x shape. So when I look at the opposite angles here, opposite angles are equal. So 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 80 degrees, 80 degrees. We want to use a protractor to measure each of the following angles here. So grab my protractor. Um, if I measure angle A, first of all, I get a measurement of 110 degrees. Angle A is 110 degrees. Um, angle C then, if I, I could either measure it or I can use my rule of angle, supplementary angles equal 180 degrees. But if I measure it, I'm gonna see that I'm at, I'm at 70 degrees. I could do the same thing for these ones here. So angle B also 110 degrees. And angle D seventy degrees. Alright? And so that that shows that the rule we're looking at. Uh, using an inductive reasoning would be true, but um, 70 degrees is opposite of D, 70 degrees, and 110 degrees opposite of B, 110 degrees. And so the exercise we just did, you can complete for this, this set of lines here. But if I were to complete the following, opposite angles at a, at a vertex are equal. Next, we're going to look at um, angles around a point. So in each case, use a protractor to measure the indicated angles and complete the work. So if I were to measure um, angle E, that's the one we're starting with. So angle E, I'm getting a measurement of 110 degrees. Angle F. I'm getting a measurement of 110 degrees. And angle G is measuring at 140 degrees. If I add those all together, I got 220 plus 140 is 360 degrees. So based on A, a conjecture that can be made is that angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. Now, in order to really form this conjecture, you should complete this example. And once you measure it, you should find that these are going to add up to be 360 degrees. So class example two, um, we want to we want to calculate the angles marked with letters. And so um, I'll just do this one here. But I'm looking for angle A. So angle A should equal, if I add up all these angles, they should equal 360 degrees, but I'm looking for angle A, my unknown, which would be 360, subtract 80, subtract 71, subtract 57, subtract 52. And if we punch these into the calculator, we get 100 degrees for angle. Now, let's, let's investigate the sum of the angles in a triangle. So draw a triangle on a piece of scrap paper and cut it. Uh, this is actually, this is something that you guys can do in class tomorrow if you want. And um, something that we can do as, as a group. So let's, let's, let's look at this investigation in class tomorrow. But let's uh, move on for the sake of time in this video. Um, the next thing we want to look at are the angles in an isosceles triangle. So angles in an isosceles triangle. So recall the following triangle properties. So in an isosceles triangle there are two equal sides and there are two equal angles. 
verify this property by measuring the sides and angles of the triangle shown. So with this, you're going to need to first of all measure the angles, um, but you're also going to need a, a ruler in order to measure each of these points. And so um, using your ruler, you want to measure from A to B. And then you want to measure from B to C. And then you want to measure from C to A. And so if I complete this first, this first triangle, from A to B, I have um, 2.8 centimeters by 2.5. Two point four centimeters, and from A to C, I have about two point eight centimeters again. And if we measure up our angles at sixty five degrees, another sixty five degrees. And I got 50 degrees. So verify this property. So in an isosceles triangle, there are two equal sides. So I got my two equal sides, and I have my two equal angles. In the diagram shown at the right, if we're looking at exterior angles of a triangle, angle X is an exterior, exterior angle. Angles A and B are interior opposite angles. So A and B are interior opposite angles. And angle X is an exterior angle, meaning it's on the outside. So in the following examples, we want to measure the exterior angle and the interior opposite angle. So I'm just going to do this first example. But if I measure my exterior angle right here, I get a measurement of 130 degrees. If I measure... Um, We'll call that X, and I'll call this Y. I have one interior angle that's equal to 60 degrees, and my other interior angle is equal to 70 degrees. So we want to come up with, um, using inductive reasoning, so based off of the evidence here, describe the relationship we can see. Well, we can see that if we add up our exterior angles, or sorry, if we add up our interior angles, the interior angles are the sum have a sum equal to the exterior angle. In class example number three, we want to calculate the angles marked with letters. So we want to calculate angle X, we want to calculate angles A and B, and we want to calculate for some of them all of the angles marked with letters. Now for each of these, we're going to have to use the different rules that we were just looking at. So here we have an isosceles triangle, or we have an angle where you have your exterior angle. That's, that's going to be equal. You, you have something, you have your angles along your, um, you have your angles along the 180 degrees that, that add up to equal. You have your um, isosceles triangle, so you know that two of these angles are going to be equal, one's going to be different. But for all of these, you got to use the different rules of triangles in order to solve. Um, but in summary of this lesson, remember that angles on one side of a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So that would be something like this, F plus E have to equal 180 degrees. Opposite angles at a vertex are equal and so this one here, here's my vertex. If I have opposite angles at, an, at a vertex, those are equal. Angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. Um, angles 
in a triangle at 180 degrees. And lastly, the exterior angle of the triangle equals the sum of the interior offset angles. And so as you work through all these class examples, you're only using these rules that we just looked at.